My name is John D. McHugh and I'm the co-founder of a news agency called Verify Media. And when I worked in places like Afghanistan, I worked with cameras like this, a good solid broadcast camera and stills cameras with the digital SLRs like this. Let me get rid of these things. So what I want to show you is just how effective it can be to film simply with an iPhone and then a couple of other pieces. Today we're going to watch my friend Meg who makes fantastic chutney and she is a magician in the kitchen so she's going to get to work and I'm going to do my best to make a watchable film about this. What I'm going to do is talk you through the techniques that I'm using to create this film. Okay, let's get started. The first technique that I want to talk about today is WMDs and I always say to people when I'm trying to teach them how to shoot if you want your video to have explosive impact you have to use WMDs. Now I'm not talking about weapons of mass destruction I'm talking about wide, mid-range and detailed shots and so I'm getting my half length shot now okay and the trick with WMDs is that you need to be adaptable so I want to get this slicing so as quick as I can I'm going to move in and get this shot because there's certain, only a certain number of tomatoes to be sliced and if I got fixated on trying to get all of my wide shots for, before I got my detail shots I could miss this now at the same time I can immediately see that I've got a nice little reflection shot here reflection shots are notoriously difficult because you usually get yourself or your cameraman in the shot but I am going to try and get it without either of those things. I want to get a second detail shot but I want to get it right over Meg's shoulder. So the other technique that I use all the time is what I call a triple shot and this is about getting three shots on the wide, three on the mid-range and three on the detail. Meg, can you just explain what you're doing here today? Uh, yeah, so I'm making chutney today. Uh, I'm going to use tomatoes and make a fresh tomato chutney. Now I want to move around the other side of Meg get myself tucked in nicely here and get a shot from here trying not to fall out of the window while I do it okay Meg can you tell me a little bit more about why you enjoy making chutney I felt a while ago that um, we have a real problem with consumption um, in society these days so I wanted to try and make as much stuff as I possibly could so when somebody moves and you're filming the trick is to follow them deliberately. No point in waving your camera around like a whole movie. Move the purpose. One of the tricks with movement is to decide what you want to happen in your frame. For this shot, I know that Meg's going to come and grab some onions. So rather than try and follow her around the kitchen, I framed up my shot in advance and I know that when she walks in and takes them out, it will add some drama to an otherwise static shot. So again, when you look at WMDs, wide, mid-range and detail, you also need to consider stability. The truth is, if I'm shooting a wide shot from back here, and I'm getting the whole kitchen, I should be able to hold that quite steady and get a nice clean shot. If I'm doing a detail shot, I need to brace myself a little more elbows into my side or squeeze up against the wall or as you saw earlier when I got in the window and whether you notice I put my feet opposite me so I could brace myself I could hold myself quite steady and these are sensible things to do when you're working handheld but the other option which it can be frustrating at times because carrying a tripod around can be quite restrictive but it makes sense if you're doing detail shots to get as much stability as possible and uh, nothing will give you stability like a tripod does and this is a very small very lightweight tripod which I can shove into my walk around bag it now allows me to come down here and get some really beautiful steady clean detail shots this is the Verify camera app that we want people to use when contributing to Verify. We've built this ourselves and it gives you a lot of control. On the right hand side here you've got the focus control, the exposure control and the colour temperature control. So the first thing I'm going to do is lock off my focus. So now I know that it's not going to search anymore. And the next step is to lock off my colour temperature. So now if the light changes, the, the colour temperature reading and the camera's not going to change. And then the third thing is I will lock off my exposure. 
but actually I'm going to just lift it up a little bit so I get lots of nice detail in the onion. Then I press record. And because I'm on a tripod, I can just stand still and watch this beautiful scene unfold in front of me. What I'm trying to do is show you the techniques that I use every time I make a film. You've got your WMDs, wide, mid-range detail. Also think about the triple shot. Don't get one wide, get three wides. Come in, get one at eye level, get a nice clean wide. Then get down on the floor and get a low angle, maybe get some light involved, get a silhouette. Then climb up on something or use your arms. These iPhones are very light. Get a selfie stick. Get your tripod up as high as it'll go. Get a wide angle from the top. So you think about your WMDs, what you're actually thinking of is a WMD, WMD, WMD. Move deliberately or don't move. The greatest difference between amateur video and professional video is a lack of this. Because I guarantee if your mum and dad filmed something of you at a birthday party, they did it like this. Oh, there's something over there. Oh, there's little Johnny. He's running out the door. Oh, look, Emily's just come in. And you move around and move around and it gives you motion sickness. Film, hold it steady. And if somebody moves and you want to move deliberately and make a decision on how they work. If you've got a steady shot and somebody walks in from this side and they're walking to this side, let them just pass through the shot. You've already framed the shot. You've made a decision. You've framed up a shot on purpose. So let that shot stand and let people pass through. Or if something's happening over here and they're moving to here, frame, follow, finish. If you can use these techniques in your filmmaking, I guarantee you, you will be happier with the results. Now, let's see the finished product. I want to show you how easy it is to make chutney. Uh, I'm going to use tomatoes and make a fresh tomato chutney and just show you that with what you have around in your house, how easy it is to make. Um, I felt a while ago that um, we have a real problem with consumption um, in society these days, so I wanted to try and make as much stuff as I possibly could. Okay, so I'm going to put all of the tomatoes in the pan now. Now, when you're making chutney, you can put everything in the pan all at the same time. It's not, there's no particular order to what you're doing. And I've used about just over a kilogram of tomatoes because we want to make a lot of chutney because it's really lovely to be able to share it with your friends and give it away because I'm not going to get through it all of it myself. You need a lot of onions to make chutney. <laughs> That's what provides the texture and also the flavour. But yeah, it does make you cry. So we're going to add some apples to our chutney. They'll give it a nice bit of texture and flavour again. Okay, so in the pot now we've got apples, tomatoes, onions, garlic, ginger. I'm going to add the sugar in and that's what will help cook down and caramelise um, the fruit and veg. Okay, we're now going to put in the magic ingredient, which is vinegar. Okay, about half a bottle. And now we get to put the heat on. Okay, this is the really fun part. This is where the magic happens. It's a little bit like alchemy. So you can just start spicing it up and flavoring it exactly how you want. So we've got some paprika going in there. and some turmeric, just because it's really pretty. I'm 
and that is our first jar of chutney. 